world. We want to welcome all our campuses around the world for joining this wonderful service tonight. Guys, we love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service. Is there anybody in the house excited tonight about the world? Can we celebrate God's word with a shout? Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self and your phones too so that you can share the video quickly. Get as many people as possible. Put them on all your different pages. Let's get in the word of his grace. Glory to God. <clears throat> now, we've been looking at Brother Paul's unique revelation of identification and we've been examining truths, our realities in Christ Jesus. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15 and 16. 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we began to establish that Brother Peter, you know, um, accepted that Brother Paul had a particular insight, a sophia, uh, an insight, a wisdom in the writings of the Old Testament. In the way Brother Paul communicated those truths, and Peter said they are hard to be understood. And he said those that are unlearned and unstable, they rest with those scriptures to their own destruction. We also established that Jesus, his teachings were in tandem with what Brother Paul taught. And we've taken time to see the teachings of Jesus and how that Brother Paul used more verbiage, more vocabulary in bringing out those truths, those revelation truths in scripture you know, in the epistles. We also said that the epistles are post-resurrection realities of all that Jesus taught in a more expansive way. In John chapter 16, verse 12, look at what Jesus said in John 16, 12. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak. And he will show you things to come. So we took time to look at the fact that the theology of Jesus, you know, and the, the things Jesus spoke about were the same things Brother Paul talked about. The spirit, which is Numa Aletia in the Gospels, when Jesus was teaching about the spirit, is the same thing Brother Paul was talking about, the spirit. But Brother Paul used another verbiage, upon apodexis, to explain the same spirit. Yesterday, we took time to look at all the activities that Jesus said that spirit will bring. He will guide you into all truth. He will teach you all things. And we saw how that, that's the same thing Brother Paul talked about. That when the spirit comes, there will be total, all information will be disclosed. There will be no closure. There will be no mystery. All mysteries will be demystified. And Brother Paul talked about that we have received the spirit of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And then we began to say the same way we saw the spirit and how that the spirit of God is the same spirit that Jesus spoke about that Brother Paul talked about. We now travel to the, the I mean, Moses' theology. Now we established that Jesus taught from Moses. Because in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, when he met the two gentlemen on the way to Emmaus, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He expounded unto them the things concerning himself in all of the scriptures. So we established that what Jesus taught was from what Moses taught. So what Moses will call the spirit is exactly what Jesus called the spirit and is exactly what Paul called the spirit. Then we went to Moses' verbiage because in the book of John chapter 5 verse number 46, John chapter 5 verse 46, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. 
he would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Next verse. Look at it. It says, but if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So Moses wrote of Jesus, meaning that there's consistency in the theology of Jesus, Moses, and the epistles. Now, so yesterday we, we went to brother Moses and we began to look at some concepts. We saw that Moses was the first person who used the concept of heaven and earth. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then we took time to look at the words that brother Moses used. Because now after he said God created the heavens and the earth, he was not referring to a planet. Because later on in Genesis 1, he gives us the story of the creation of the planet. And that's why many people get it wrong. So we began to say, what is Moses' heaven and earth? Remember in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, he says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, so the earth was without form and void. The word tohua bohu. It means nothing, nothing. Then he now says, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Ruach, the Ruach of God, which is Jesus' pneuma aletia, which is Paul's upon apodexix, which is the same thing they were talking about, moved upon the face of the darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And John says, the light was the life of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Bereshit. I K, all right, in the beginning, Bereshit, I K in the Greek, in the beginning was the Logos, the thought, the idea, God's thinking pattern, in the beginning was the word, the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Then we now began to say Jesus, when he spoke about light, he spoke about light as a spiritual principle, light, darkness, and we took time to look at the scriptures so that we are not, you know, you know, we are not looking at things like an archaeologist, but we are looking at things as people who are spiritual. Now, <clears throat> yesterday I said, you know, what is very popular or common in the church world is that when people die, we assume that they have gone to heaven. And yesterday I said, well, the impression they give is like heaven is some enlarged mortuary where dead people are assembled. But that's not the truth because there's no teaching in the Bible that says people go to heaven when they die. And we've been looking at all of this on heaven. We took time to look at some statistics yesterday that I'm not about to go over again. And we saw that Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And when he was saying that, he was saying that to a man that was on earth. We also saw that Jesus said, whatever you on earth bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We also took time to look at that yesterday. Then we took time to look at other things. Because we said the kingdom is the word basileo, which means the reign or the rule. So kingdom is not a place. Kingdom is the reign or the rule of God in the hearts of men. Now we also said light and darkness is in the hearts of men. Because we took time to look at a lot of scriptures. And I will advise you if you are not here, get all the materials we have taught up until now. Now we stopped yesterday at Acts 7.55 talking about Stephen, his own account of heaven. Acts 7.55. <clears throat> But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven. He's on earth, but he looks up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw the glory. Now when we say he looked into heaven, he was not looking into the sky. So that was a revelation. 
Look at Acts chapter 9 verse 3. Acts chapter 9 verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. He was on earth, but light from heaven was shining on him. Yesterday we saw that a voice came from heaven. And they heard it. Now we are seeing light shining upon a man on earth from heaven. Acts 10, 11. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10 verse 11. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. As it had been a great ship knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. So he saw heaven opened and he saw things coming to him from heaven without causing a natural commotion. The things were coming to him from heaven and didn't hit somebody. They didn't break a story building somewhere. I mean the building. Which means we are not talking about a physical reality here. Acts chapter 10 verse 16. Acts chapter 10 verse number 16. This was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So a man is praying on earth and he is seeing things moving in and out of heaven within his environment. Without traveling, without going anywhere. The question now will be, from all we have seen, do you still think heaven is a planet? No, it can't be a planet. It must be a strange planet if it's a planet. That means that planet then must be right here on earth. Because everyone we read had encounters with heaven right here on earth. They didn't have to die. Paul uses the term heaven 20 times. 20 times. Don't forget we said in the four gospels it is used 141 times. Don't also forget that we said Jesus used it 113 times. And brother Paul used it 20 times. Fewer than the book of Acts. Now anytime you see Paul use a word it's either he doesn't use it at all or he uses it less frequently than others. Or he must have replaced the word. It's either he uses it less than others. Or he doesn't use it at all. Or he has replaced the word like apodexis. Which replaced pneuma aletia. Alright. With something in his inside. So he must have replaced it. That means... Just like Peter said, Paul had a Sophia, an insight from God with which he explained the same things in much more clarity. Now the book of Hebrews has heaven five times. Let's see a few of them. I mean, let's see all of them. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 about the death of Jesus and what he did with his blood. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. If you look at the way he pens his word, the writer of Hebrews, he uses heaven as the opposite of the material world. He uses heaven as the opposite of the material world. And that is how the writer of Hebrews uses his own heaven. For example, Hebrews 10.34 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34. For you had compassion of me in my bones and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance, opposite. He uses heaven as an opposite of the material. Look at Hebrews 12, 23. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, which are written where? In heaven. Look at that Hebrews 12, 25 to 26. Hebrews 12, 25 to 26. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spoke on earth, 
much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Next verse. Whose voice then shook the earth. So he spoke from heaven and his voice shook the earth. This can be natural. Are you following? This can be natural. But now he has promised saying once more, yet one, once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Again, what is done in heaven is seen on earth. What is done in heaven, the impact is felt on earth. Which means heaven and earth from the writer of Hebrews are together. James uses the word heaven twice. You can write down for further study. James 5.12 and James 5.18. Now, it's interesting here because heaven here is an atmosphere. James was talking about the atmospheric heavens. He is also not asking you to swear by heaven. The atmosphere where we get rain. Let's look at it, James 5.12, James 5.12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your ye be ye, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. The heaven is talking about here is the atmospheric heaven, like people do, uh, 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 uh. Okay? That's swearing by heaven. All right? Why are you laughing? <laughs> you used to do it, eh? All right, James 5, 18. James chapter 5, verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Which heaven get, gave rain? Atmospheric heaven, all right? Just like I said, if Jesus was going to come in the clouds, and, there is, and the clouds decide to rain, that means Jesus will fall down. Isn't it? Because when, when the clouds gather and, and they start raining, they, they evaporate. Abi, They evaporate. The clouds disappear. So if, Jesus, if the clouds, the Bible says you shall see him come in the clouds, it's natural clouds. And by any chance, rain falls that day of his coming, then it means Jesus will fall down. We may have to use a ladder to bring him down in a hurry before the rains begin. All right? So keep that somewhere. <laughs> keep that somewhere. Heaven, therefore, will be used for what is above the earth, yet in the earth. Just like you have the physical heaven, heaven and earth. Heaven is above the earth, yet in the earth. In physical. So the same thing. The reality called heaven is above the earth, but is in the earth. So we're going to learn what the heaven is from the physical description. Please pay attention. We're going to learn what the heaven is from the physical description. The physical heaven is above the earth. But remember that the physical heaven is part of the material world. It's part of the material world. Okay? So, both the heaven and the earth in the physical, they are all material stuff. They are all matter. They are subject to matter. And that becomes for us a, a hypodegma. You remember hypodegma? This is a hypodegma or a pointer. The physical heaven and earth is a hypodegma to the heaven and earth that was communicated by Moses. A hypodegma. Alright? Now, when we say heaven and earth is a distinction. Yet, the heaven we are referring to is the atmosphere of the earth. The atmosphere of the earth. So that way, we will understand heaven and earth when we are talking about man. So the way it's used in its geographical way will give us an idea how it is used referring to man. The way it is used in geography. Earth, the ground, 
heaven, the atmosphere that leads into the outer space. Yet, the heavens and the earth are somewhat together because from the earth you can look up and see the atmosphere into the clouds. In fact, when the skies are clear, you can see into the stars. In fact, sometimes you can see shooting stars. Is that true? You can see shooting stars. All right? You can look up and see as far as possible. Sometimes you even see the aircrafts in the, in the, in the sky. You see them right up there. And you even see beyond the aircraft. Because heaven and earth are together. They are together in the sense that heaven is above the earth. And from the earth you can look into heaven. Are you here? From the earth you can look into heaven. Now, remember we are not doing geography here. But we are using little bits of the physical as a hypodegma to communicate spiritual reality as always it is with Jesus' parables and sometimes with Moses' teachings and even sometimes with Brother Paul when he will say, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal, then he will use natural things to communicate spiritual realities. Now, stay with me. So, look at Peter using the word heaven about four times. First Peter 1 Peter 1.4 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away reserved where? In heaven for you. So are you watching? The inheritance is reserved in heaven for you. But what kind of inheritance? Incorruptible undefiled that faded not away. Meaning it is not matter. It is not matter. And it is reserved in heaven. So that heaven also must be a heaven that is not matter. Only immaterial heaven can carry immaterial realities. You can't say an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and further not away, reserved for you in the atmosphere. No, if it is heaven, then the heaven Peter is talking about must be an immaterial reality that is carrying immaterial realities. Are we in the building? First Peter 1.12 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12 Unto whom it was revealed and not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into the gospel sent down from heaven alright? 1 Peter 3.32 1 Peter Chapter 3, verse 32. Who's adorning? First Peter, chapter 3, verse 22. Sorry. 322. First Peter. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Talking about Jesus. And these angels are here. The angels are here and they are made subject to Jesus in heaven. The angels are here and they are made subject to Jesus in heaven. 2 Peter 1 18. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven we heard. When we were with him in the holy mount, they heard the voice that came from heaven on earth. All right? So let's quickly think, just like the atmospheric heaven is right in the earth. The atmospheric heaven is right in the earth, yet separate and distinct. The atmospheric heaven is right in the earth, yet it is separate and distinct. Why? Because it is higher than the earth. And the earth is the material base of the atmospheric heaven. It's higher. And yet it seems like it's the one that controls the weather. As it were. The atmosphere in the earth. 
That's how it is said in the natural. And this will help our understanding. Now let's look at the word heavens. And I'm going to use King James Version again just for the purpose. Let me use the word heavens. Okay. You'll find it in the Old Testament 120 times. The word heavens as plural. 120 times. In the four gospels, four times. In the book of Acts, two times. Give me Acts. Acts 2.34. Acts chapter 2. Verse number 34. For David, are you all paying attention? For David is not yet ascended into the heavens. But he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down on my right hand. For David is not yet ascended into heavens, but he died. David died. But it's not in heaven. So heaven is not where dead people gather. For David is dead and gone and is not yet ascended into heaven. Acts 7.56 Acts 7.56 And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, Stephen, and he was on earth. Now let's look at Paul. He uses the term heavens two times. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. 2 Corinthians, he used the word heavens plural twice. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So this heavens he's talking about is not matter because it houses eternal things. Matter cannot be eternal. <laughs> matter cannot be eternal. This platform here is matter. Maybe in another 10, 20 years it won't be here. Cars are matter. That's why once you buy a car, you start using it, it starts depreciating. Television screens are matter. Your shoes, your clothes matter. That's why you can't wear one cloth for 50 years. No matter how economical you are. In fact, the more you wear it, the faster it will get out of place. I remember when I used to be poor and I had just one trouser and one shirt. Black check shirt, pink trouser. <laughs> I was there, I'm telling you. Because of overuse and overwash, the pink trouser became white. I'm not joking. You will, you will never know it was pink. Because I was wearing it every day. At night, I will wash it, iron it in the morning, put it on. That's all I had. Some of you think I'm joking. I was wearing one trouser and shirt for six months. Six. After six months, should I bother you with that? After six months, the brother who now finally was led to give me clothes took me to his house and made a mockery of me. I saw him recently in Uyo here. He's looking as old as Father Abraham. Made a mockery of me in his house. Then brought a pair of two or three shirts. And didn't ask me to check them. He said, I know that no matter what this one, you will find a way for it to size you. I told him I don't need it. I told him I don't need it. That I'm okay. He said, no, I want to give you. I said, I don't need it. Let's pray. Let me go. I want to pray for you. <laughs> so I can go. I prayed for him. I left his shirts for him in his house. How can you make mockery of me? And then I will take your cloth and wear. For what? I won't always be here. Few, the few months I saw him, if not that he had grown bigger than me in size, I would have taken him to my house and give him some suits. But he's fatter than me, so I can't give him my suits. Because they are not elastic. <laughs> but 
we have a house. He may be listening to this broadcast and he knows he's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> we, that's why you must be careful the way you treat people on your way to greatness. Don't think on your way back or when you get there, they will never get there. Must be, you, must, you must treat people with dignity, if not for anything, for God's sake. When you bless people, bless them honorably and preserve their dignity. Don't humiliate somebody just because you are privileged right now. If they had the same circumstances you were exposed to and the same opportunities, they may have done better than you. I'm teaching good. Anyway, we have a house in the heavens. Eternal. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. He said he went into heavens and he feels all things. Talking about the church. Hebrews 1.10 is talking about the atmosphere. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10. And thou Lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of thine hands. This is talking about the atmospheric, you know, the physical earth. He calls the atmospheric heavens part of the earth. And he was quoting from Psalm 102 verse 45. Thou Lord in the beginning had laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. Talking about the atmospheric heavens. Psalm 102 45 is where David was quoting from. 102 45. Now look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Now, that is, you know, the atmospheric. Yet he uses it for the atmospheric heavens in Hebrews 1.10 and Hebrews 4.14. Look at Hebrews 7.26. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Spiritual. Hebrews 9.23. Talking about the heart of man and he says things in heaven. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens. He's talking about the heart of man should be purified with this. Because the purification is the heart of man. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Then you can read this at home. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5. 7, 10. Chapter 3, verse 5, 7, 10, 12, 13. 2 Peter chapter 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 13. Now the challenge we have with the word heaven is that whilst is the same word used for the atmospheric heavens, which is always a part of the earth, it is also used for a spiritual principle, which is also a part of the earth. That's why there's confusion. It is the word used for the atmospheric heaven which is part of the earth and it is also the same word used for a spiritual principle which is part of the earth. That's why many people get confused. So when the earth is used for the material where people live, then it is also used for a part of it where people don't live as it were. The earth is used for where people live and it is also used for a part of the earth where people don't live. The skies, the atmospheric heavens. You know, with all of the technology, people like Elon Musk want to go and live in Mars. They've done their visit to Mars 
and they are thinking of many things because the challenges are much. They are thinking of, okay, how are we going to have agriculture? How are we going to plant things in mass? It's true that the earth there in mass look like the earth on the ground, but it does not have the same composition. So they are thinking scientifically. What do we do? Because God never created for man to live outside space. Man was to live on earth, and he made the earth habitable. Are we in the building? Now, so that will let us see how man is also referred to in heaven and in the earth in the same place. So let's look at the word heaven in the Hebrew. The word heaven is the word shamayims. Shamayims. Shamayim. S-H-A-M-A-Y-I-M. Shamayim. Of course, when you talk to the Hebrew man and you say heaven, he looks up. Shamayims. Because Shamayim is from the word Shane, Shane, S H A N E H. Shamayims is from the word Shane. It means high, lofty. The word Shane means away from here and sometimes invisible. Away from what you can see, heaven, Shamayims. So that means the term heaven is descriptive. The term heaven is descriptive. It definitely will have to be used in context. It will have to be used in context. That's key. Now do not ever get to the risk. Listen everybody. If you were right in finish and look up. Alright. Don't ever get to the risk of saying... Heaven is not a place. And you say it authoritatively. And totally without explaining properly what you mean. Did you hear what I just said? Don't ever get it, fall into that trap of saying heaven is not a place. Authoritatively and conclusively. Without taking the time to explain it is explanation that will make people arrive at the understanding. Because if heaven is not a place and Christ is there, then that doesn't make sense. If Christ is a definite person and he is somewhere, then it must be a place. Huh? Are you following? So you must use your words rightly. Question. Is heaven a place? Yes, it is. But not a place as some think. That's the way to answer. Yes, it is. But it's not a place as some people think. That's the way to answer it. So let's get back to Moses' writing now. Mm. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth. In the beginning, that is Moses' explanation of man in two worlds. Man in two worlds. The seen and the unseen. So man must always be viewed in two worlds. The seen and the unseen. And so now, he typifies that by heaven and earth. Created in the same location. So that you never think it is a distance as it were. Heaven and earth. Therefore, Moses uses heavens and earth as operations. He uses it as operations or principles of operations in the same place. He uses heaven and earth as operations or principles of operations in the same place. Please pay attention. Look at chapter 1 verse 2 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So God created the heaven and earth, 
and the earth was without form and void. Then he mentions darkness and he mentions light. Darkness, like, look at verse 4 and 5 of Genesis 1. You will love this one. Genesis 1, 4 and 5. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning we are the first day. These are spiritual terms. Then the next thing is he talks about the waters. Look at verse 8 to 10 of Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 8 to 10. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Are you watching Moses' intelligence? Next verse. And God called the dry land earth. But remember, the dry land was covered with water under heaven. Because they were together. Then the waters were gathered. And God commanded dry land to appear. At the appearance of dry land under heaven in the same environment, God now called the dry land earth. Are you following? Put it up. He called it earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. He is teaching the visible and the invisible. Moses. The first thing he said about light and darkness was heavenly. Light and darkness in the heavens heavenly, non-material. So in this instance, he is teaching about mankind using the concept of heaven and earth. Heaven now looks as the dominion principle. Heaven now looks as the overriding principle because Shemaim's above what you might not see. But you can see Shamayims. It is the Shamayims. So you won't get lost. He now talks about the creation of the physical heaven and the physical earth. And they were all in the same place. He says heaven and earth. Then he now talks about the, that heaven as light and darkness and waters. Night and day. Then he now talks about, you know, what he still calls heaven and earth. So it is Moses' language of explaining man. Because we have said earlier that Jesus used Moses' terms. So Jesus' heaven will be two. Atmospheric and spiritual. Atmospheric and spiritual. Jesus' earth will also be about man. Atmospheric and man's actions. Atmospheric and man's actions. That's exactly how Moses wrote it. So that means the first chapter of Genesis has an explanation in there. Now pay attention. Light. John calls that light the light of all men. Moses said light. Then John explained that what Moses meant by light was that light was the light of men. Then Jesus now said, I am the light. Jesus now said, I am the light. Then John now says, all the prophets bear witness of that light. Then Paul now says, light out of darkness. Look at the progression. Did you follow that progression? Let me give you again the sequence. John, I mean Moses said light. John calls that light, light of men. Then Jesus said, that light of men that John is talking about, I am the light. Then John now says, all the prophets from the beginning of time till himself 
bore witness of that light. Then Paul in the epistles now says, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness by shining in our hearts. By shining in our hearts. So Moses wrote salvation. And he wrote that heaven as it were, as the heart of a man, where there can be darkness and there can be light. And that heart of man, where there is darkness and light, is right here on earth. Glory. Are you still here? Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. The word host there is a Hebrew term used for an army. Most likely angels. So it says the heavens and earth. Look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Let me read a bit of it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Next verse. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Three. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Moses wrote this at a time when man needed salvation. Listen everybody. Genesis was Moses' teaching ministry to the children of Israel in need of an exodus. They were in bondage. And Moses was telling them of God's plan to take them out of bondage to a promised land. So Genesis is God's promise of an exodus. Genesis is God's promise of an exodus. So Moses wrote it at a time when man needed salvation. Moses was not writing a step-by-step -step account of what he was seeing. Moses was using creation to explain salvation. He was using creation to explain salvation. What God finished in heaven and earth will be the people of God. What God finished. You understand? Those who have entered into his rest, he called them in the seventh day. He called them in the seventh day. Then the writer of Hebrews expanded the verbiage he said, it's not a Sunday. The writer of Hebrews says, that day of rest is the day of the believing ones. We that believe have entered. So the day of rest is the day of the believing ones. Or did you remember, Paul calls it the day of salvation. The day of salvation. He's not talking about a particular day, but a period of time. The day of salvation is not a Sunday. Those who have believed and have entered into rest. So when he was telling them to keep the day, to remember the words, I mean the Lord's walk, under the law. When Moses gave them as a law. Okay. He was saying to them. This is the day. Of the people of God. When they remember God's finished work in man. It was not finished in Adam. God's work. Was finished in Christ. Not in Adam. That's exactly what Moses is writing here. Look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth 
when they were created. What did they do? Watch. Eh? These are the generations. Heaven and earth don't have generations. For heaven and earth to have generations means man is the heaven and the earth. That is why there is generations. I don't know if I'm teaching here. So the heaven and the earth here in Moses' communication is referring to man using creation to teach salvation. The word generation is the word Tele dot in the Hebrew. I mean tole dot. T-O-L-E-D-O-T-H. Tole dot. Used for genealogy. Only for men. It is only used for men. Generation is never used for anything else other than for men by Moses. And he used it 27 times. It is used for families. Tole dot. Tole dot. Moses uses 27 times for families. It's derived from the Hebrew word yalad. Yalad. Y-A-L-A-D. Used for families. In other words, Moses explains heaven and earth as man. Generations. Tole dot. Is not used for trees. It's used for men. So therefore, Moses uses man on two planes. In the natural and in the supernatural. That is the term heaven and earth. The visible and the invisible. Where does the light shine? Or where does light shine? Light shines in the invisible. That's the light of salvation. That's the light of Genesis 1, 2, and 3. That's the heaven and the earth. And both heaven and earth are not miles apart. They are just explanations of different ways by which man functions. Earthly, heavenly, supernatural, natural. Earthly, heavenly, supernatural, natural. So therefore, by using the word shamayims, from the word shane, it means that Moses started by saying, that the control room in the earth is not visible. It's invisible. And he uses shamayims to explain it. Shamayims. Bereshit. Elohim. Shamayims, heavens. That's what we see, that what we see doesn't come from what we see. That what we see comes from what we don't see. Just like you look into the heavens, you can't see. So he now uses that to typify operations in man that can't be seen. What we see, what we don't see. Look at this. We see a physical man. But the authority that that man releases is unseen. The control room of a man is not seen with the eye. You know, there's a movie I watched. You know, one, one short boy. Very short. Very short. His friend went and looked for trouble. Very tall guy. So they beat his friend. Then his friend said, I will go and bring my master. 
since you beat me, you are in big trouble. I will go and bring my master. So he went and brought this short boy. The boy reached him here. The one they beat. He's the master of the beaten one. Reach the beating one here. So they are coming as if he's coming with Junior. So the person that beat him looked at him and said, <laughs> did you go to bring your grandchild to come and fight me? So he insulted him. <laughs> so the little boy said, is it me you're talking to like that? Is it me you're talking to like that? The man said, if I slap you, they will not find the pieces of your body. Me. He said, yes. He said, ah, I will finish you. So the big guy that beat up the other guy now came to this small guy in an attempt to slap him. The boy just did him. He went up the sky and hit the floor. Duma. The little boy came and put his leg on him and said, next time, don't you try. He told the other guy, let's go. The control room of the short man is not visible. He's operating from a heaven. Now that's just a that's just a low level illustration I'm trying to use. But what I'm saying is, how many of you remember that heaven is a control room in the earth? You remember that? All right. Now, <clears throat> stay with me. So, heaven therefore will be the control room where things are controlled what you can call the Genesis principle. There is a Genesis principle. That is how it happened. And this is why Paul will now say things like Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, 1 to 3. You are the quickened, put it up for me. You are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh. So he's the prince of the power of the air. Or what Paul is saying is that the prince of the power of the pneuma is the spirit. That walketh. So there's a spirit at work. There's an immaterial reality. There's a principle at work in the man in darkness. Just like there is the spirit at work in the believer in the light. The spirit of adoption. Let me not be in a hurry. According to the prince of the power of the air. Now look at the same figuratives. Air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Three things. In. It works in. Air. Spirit. Figuratives. In. Air. Spirit. Then chapter 6 verse 12 of Ephesians, put it up for me, Ephesians 6 12, he now says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high world, rulers of darkness, of this world, the rule darkness Darkness where? In the heart of a man that is not born again. And the man is where? In this world. Wickedness. In the heavenlies. Did you observe? He talks about darkness of this world. Then wickedness in high. And the heavenly is referring to is where? Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Where is the high places? In man. Wickedness is in man. 
So the, 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 the wickedness he's referring to here when he talks about high or heavenlies is in man. Just like Jesus when he said the heavens were opened. It means the invisible operations in the earth was opened. And those invisible operations on the earth are where? In man. The weather in the atmosphere physically controls what happens on earth. The heavenlies in man controls what happens in that man physically. Is it getting clear? Is it getting clear? Because heaven and earth are in the same place. So when you see heaven, or when you say heaven, it's a shorthand for mankind. Because that is his sphere of authority. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 10. Still looking at Moses. Deuteronomy 30 verse 10. If thou shalt hearken, I love Moses, look at the way he will coin this thing. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul next verse for this commandment which I commanded this day it is not hidden from thee neither is it far off next verse it is not in heaven that thou shouldest say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Next verse. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee. So nigh that is in your mouth. And it's in your heart that thou mayest do it. Are we getting clearer? You know, Moses is such a huge player with words. He's a wordsmith, man. Moses is a wordsmith. Now, he uses heaven and earth to explain heaven and earth to man. Look at verse 15. Same Deuteronomy 30. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good, death and and evil. You didn't see that. Life and good. Death and evil. Look at verse 19. Same chapter. 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life. Is the same man who talked about the tree of life. Choose life. Question. Who is in heaven and earth? Man. So he now says, I say this to you today. Heaven and earth, therefore will refer to man's sphere of authority. See how brother Paul interpreted it. Romans 10, 6 to 8. He interpreted the same thing from Moses' theology. Romans 10, 6 to 8. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Kai, I love brother Paul, man. I love brother Paul. You guys are not seeing because you're busy writing. Put it up so that we can see it. Go back to verse. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I love this guy. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not where. Say not where. Say not where. Who shall ascend into heaven to bring Christ down from heaven? Next verse. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. Next verse. But what saith it? 
the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So he calls that life the goodness of God. I said before you, life and good, death and evil. So the life is the goodness of God. So Moses speaks his words, life and death. Remember, he is the same person who wrote Genesis chapter 2. He calls it the tree of life relating to Christ. Then he calls death the absence of Christ. Life, Christ, death when Christ is absent. Because he, he wrote the two texts, you know. I said before. So Moses uses that to talk about God giving man a choice. And he had to write that because he was talking to a Jewish audience that had the law in their minds. But Paul wrote, he wrote that same thing in this way. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Not death by God. Death by sin. That's Romans 5.12. So, one man, sin entered. He didn't say God gave man a choice. He said God gave man life. God didn't give you a choice. God gave you life. You rejecting the life God gave. When God's life is rejected by you, what comes as an absence of that God's life? What you have created by yourself by rejecting the life of God is death. So death is not a creation of God. Rather, death is the absence of God. God gave only life. God never gave you two things. He gave you just life. So, because God gave only life, man rejecting God's life created man's choice. Man rejecting God's life created man's choice. So, God's justice and judgment is not God saying, if you get this fine. If you don't, I will do this to you. No. God's judgment is to discern for you the implication of what you will do. We can say it very well like, man therefore was not saved from God's wrath because there is no wrath in God. Man was saved from man's wrath. Man was saved from a self-destruct button. God gives life. Only life. So Moses' tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is Moses' verbiage. And Jesus refined it for us. Because he's not talking to men who are unbelieving in their hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3.16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Next verse. God, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Next verse. Glory to God. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not, the absence of God is condemnation. He's condemned because he did not believe. He doesn't mention God in the unbelief. He mentions God in the absence. You did not believe. So God left. The absence of God 
is where condemnation and darkness came. So Jesus refines that for us. He doesn't attack Moses. He only explains Moses' teachings to us. And this became brother Paul's Uranius. That's the word heaven in the Greek or euphoranius, things of heaven. So in Christ's explanation, therefore, he gives clarity to the word spoken before him. So in other words, Jesus had a way he explained. His heaven is God's heaven. His heaven is what Moses was passing across. Because Moses oftentimes used heaven materially to explain heaven immaterially. I'm almost done. Jesus didn't teach that. Jesus talked with the heaven and the material to explain the kingdom or the authority of the invisible in the visible. Whatever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever things you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because that's where you are. So since you're on earth, you operate heaven and earth from earth. In other words, he brings the two together in one place. Just like Moses did in creation. So Paul did not in any way differ from the things that Jesus said. You will see as we get to the next session that Jesus talked about the heaven, the Oranios, and Paul majored on the Euphoranios. Jesus stayed with heaven, Paul stayed with the things that are there. And they were all within the earth sphere. Listen carefully. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the earth is man. The reason for man is fellowship. The reason for the heavens is the earth. The reason for the earth is man. The reason for man is fellowship with God. E.W. Kenyon made that clear. So brother Paul never differed from what Jesus taught. And Jesus never differed from what Moses taught. So what Moses taught was explained by Jesus in parables and taught by Paul in doctrine. Is it clear? What Jesus, I mean what Moses taught was explained by Jesus in parables and taught by Paul in the epistles as doctrine. And in the doctrine of heaven, there is no distance, there is no travel. The man that is born again is born into heaven. He lives in heaven and he remains in heaven. And after a while, on the day of resurrection, he wears his heavenly body so that him and the living can be brought together to a gathering. Because the living, mortality shall put on immortality. So those that died also will wear their heavenly body so that there is a coming together unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. Praise God. Are you blessed tonight? Get on your feet. That's all I've got for you. Glory. Glory. Well, get on your feet tonight. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm in heaven right now. In Christ. Christ is in me. Right now. I have that reality at work in me right now. I am light. I am light. I'm the light of the world. I'm a city set on a hill. That cannot be healed. Lift your hands and begin to give thanks to God for these realities. Lebron da da do lo do boja kale ne menege le da babara gada boroko to biga la nama na koto nengo lo do boja kale ne ma lebro do zoko lo do bobro da bali de babo boroko to makale te bebeya lebro go do ja kale ne babra gada boroko to begeli na mana kato megengele ne makato ege boja kala na mambro gada babara kato la kate eke roche kate embata la kato le pre atombre tombre tombre 
Greton, Greton, Gretol, E Parata Catole Cobre Catanagade, E Brando Seta Brecatanagadea, A Lo Tabare, Cabanonda Brecatanagaya, A Cotanoga Bazota Brecatanaga, A Parata Nagadole Poracata, E Catena Cate de Catea, E Breto Cabalada, A Sose Cosa Sose, E Crenga de Breca Batea, E Calata Catapaza, E Sote Cobre, E Sote Cobre, E Sote Cobre, E Paracata Balagada, E Cambre. Te gabre kadaya, e grata la kabado, e soso balo, e so krengo te de bede, e mbatala, e mbatala, e mbatala, e tapato bedo perope, e breka to le pope, e grata na kataya, e lona bakatamas, e breto kato le barada, e zota, e zota, e zota, me katola, me katola, me katola, me katola, e breta kata, e breta kata, e breta kata, e pataga, e me kataga, e patola go, e breta kada, e kar. Ragaba, a Patagada, a Sotagaba, a Paragada, a Catagada, a Cabalaga, a Grando Sabata, a Cabaracata, a Pracatagada, a Caracata, a Sota Propria, a Pratagada, a Tabasagada, a Cotapotoba, a Cotapota, a Cotapota, a Canobalea, a Pratagata, a Sota Balea, a Pracatanaga, a Paracataga, a Catana, a Capata, a Catamata, a Catamata, a Catamata. E rosa baia, e pavê catana, e catapata, le cotela, le cotela, le cotela, le cotela, a tapata bato, a chata batala, e bracata na gaia, e grata na gata, a perrote manea, a tena bata, e branda sote, e branda sote, e branda sote, e cote mago, e cote no bo, e cote no bo, e cote no bo, a te brata, 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 a catale. A Catalea, a Catalea, a Catalea, a Catalea, a Perena, a Perena, a Perena, a Perena, a Catala, a Satapa, a Cratanaga, a Cratanaba, a Pratagana, a Crapada, a Capataya, a La Pata, a Cratanaga, a Pratanaga, a Yana Mata, a Paratana, a Caprete, a Pratagana, a Peretania, a Catalaga, a Paratana, a Retana Pata. A shota bata, e parata naga, e prata no, e prata no, e prata no, e kata ba, e prata gada, e prata naga, e prata ga, e kata dia, e kata dia, a kata ya, a kata ya, a kata ya, a kata ya, e parada, e parada ya, a kata ba, a le parada, e re banaga, a parada go, e kata ba, e kata ba, e kata ba, e kata ba, a kata ya, a ragada. Aragada, 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 Apatagaya, Apatagaya, Atemata, Apatagaya, Apatanaga, Aparagada, Aparagada, Akaragada, 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 Akapayaga, Akapayaga, Aparanaga, Apratana, 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 Akapayaga. Rotolabata, 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 Akatabaha, Apratanaga, Apratanaga. This man in heaven has a way of communicating. He can speak with understanding. He can speak with another one. Atekote, Eparatakada. You are that person. Ataga, 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 Akataga, Akataga, Akataga. A kataga, a kataga, a kataga, a kapata, a kataba, a prataga, a kataba, a korobe, a korobe, a korobe, a tomata, a tomata, a kabalo, a kabalo, a paragada, a pratanaga, a tapala, a shataga, a kapata, a pratago, a pratago, a londado, a kotanaba, a parakataya, a kotemanega, a lekabatolo, a pratanagaya, a pratanagaya, a tagaya. A pratana, a prayaga, a prataya, a kadaba, a kalaba, a kalaba, a kadabata, a pratagada, a ragataga, a katabata, a lotabata, a pratanago, a pronyaga, a pronyaga, a pronyaka, a pronyaka, a pronyaka, a pronyaka, a pronyaka, a shiatana, a kabalataga, a prapratagada, a parakataga, a pratanaga, a kabalataga, a parapataga. A carapata, a catagaya, a 
Katabana, a Pratanaga, a Lotabana, a Lotabana, a Lotabana, a Yotalo, a Yotalo, a Yotalo, a Gadaba, a Galaba, a Garaba, a Tatana, a Paragata, a Proprata, a Propratona, a Propratona, a Propratona, a Propratata, a Tatataba, a Gotabalo, a Gotabalo, a Gotabalo, a Gotabalo, a Gotabalo, a Ragada, a Ragada, a Ragada, a Ragada, a Tatabada, a Prataya, a Pratanagaya, a Pratolabo, a Satabala, a Prakata, a Pratanaga, a Paragataya, a Gobarado, a Gobarado, a Gobarado, a Gobarado, a Tabasa, a Tabasaya, a Tabasaya, a Potamaga, a Pratanaga, a Garagada, a Gabataya, a Lotalo, a Lotalo, a Lotalo, a Lotalo, a Lotalo, a Gobarada, a Gabataga, a Paragataga, a Paragataga, a Grayo, 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 a Parotel, a Parotel, a Parotel, a Parotel, a Labata, a Labata, a Labata, a Labata, a Yatama, a Parada, a Lotano, a Lotabada, a Rotabala, a Gotabada, a Gotabala, a Garabata, a Paragata, a Gabatagaya, a Goyagoda, a Goyagoda, a Goyagoda, a Pratagaya, a Shinabata, a Paratanaga, a Krabata, a Tabataga, a Gotabata, a Tabala, a Karabata, a Pratanaga, a Tabasaga, a Kobataga, a Prendagaya, a Kayabata, a Korobado, a Karabata, a Pratanaga, a Kayabata, a Kayabata, a Kobatolo, a Prabata, a Sakataya, a Katabata, a Katabata, a Prabataka, a Pratakata, a Prabataka, a Pratakata, a Takataya, a Parakata, a Kapanogo, a Lotago, a Lotapolo, a Rotabaya, a Propratoya, a Pratanaga, a Prapataga, a Tabasada, a Prandaso, a Prandasaya, a Paretano, a Yanotaya, a Yanotaya, a Yanotaya, a Patagaya, a Gorapata, a Pratagaya, a Labara, a Tabala, a Labata, a Labata, a Yabata, a Carabata, a Paranaco, a Paranaco, a Paranaco, a Capata, a Patagato, a Yanoho, a Yanoho, a Yanoho, a Yanoho, a Tabasota, a Gratanaga, a Gratanaga, a Patanaga, a Paroto, a Tabasaya, a Dasaya, a Sandaya, 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 a Yogaya, a Yogaya, a Yogaya, a Goyobata, a Garabata, a Garabata, a Gabata, a Rotabata, a Paragada, a Gabata, a Garabata, a Kadaba, a Kadabata, a Kabarada, a Katanaga, a Lopara, a Yogata, a Shatamaga, a Pratanaga, a Pratagada, a Kabataya, a Karata, a Paracata, a Katabara, a Paratono, a Kabanahaya, a Yotaba, a Yotaba, a Yotaba, a Yotaba, a Yotaba, a Gratanaga, a Gratanaga, a Gratanaga, a Gratanaga, a Gratanaga, a Kadaba, a Parata, a Pacataya, a Katabala, a Pratanoga, a Parata, a Gramrata, a Grabranda, a Grabranda, a Grabranda, a Grabranda, a Grabranda, a Grabranda, a Shatabaga, a Gotabata, a Tabala, a Sabala, a Gotaba, a Gotaba, a Gotaba, a Gotaba, a Karaga, a Karabada, a Karaba, a Karabada, a Kabataga, a Kabata, a Kalabata, a Rabata, a Katabana, a Karabada, a Pratagada, a Kabata, a Laparaga, a Sakataga, a Sakataga, a Patagana, a Yogata, a Paragada, a Paragada, a Gadagada, a Grota, 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 a
Jesus Christ, how that is said in the last days there shall be mockers and scoffers. There shall be men who separate themselves sensual. They don't have the spirit of God. He said, But you, beloved, are building up yourself on your most holy faith. When you speak in tongues, you pray for yourself and you pray for the brethren. 
Stand like Epaphras. Oh, brother Paul declared that Epaphras, one of us saluted you. Ekabatagada is a fellow laborer. Ekabatagata he said he labors in prayers for you. Akabata, that you may stand in all the will of God. Ephesians says that when you do it for the brethren, you can do it in the spirit. you in our prayers. We desire that you be filled with all the fullness of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I can tell you, I can tell you, all over the world, power citizens, we are filled with the fullness of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I do better, I do better, I do better, I do better, I do better. Even the calling of winning souls that is making disciples of all nations. He said, These are the words which I told you while I was yet with you, and all things must be fulfilled. Which was spoken of Moses, the prophet. He added, And you are witnesses of these things. I am a witness of these things. He said, The kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God and of His Christ and His array. The zeal of the house of God has sitting us up. We go all out for souls. A 
Kabrataya, a Kabala, a Kabala. Nobody is sitting on the fence. Etobata, a Kabala, a Kabala, a Kabala. Everybody is diving in. Everybody is jumping in. A Kotaba, a Kabala, a Kayaba. It will be like in the days of the Chronicles. They say, He that escapes the sword of Jehu shall not escape the sword of Hassel. Because we are all involved. The hearts of men, the darkness in the hearts of men cannot accept us. Jesus will say that you should put in the sequel because the harvest is come. I hit to the call of soul winning. I am up and doing a a a a a a a he said to the apostles, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. This is what you are going to do, and you shall be witnesses. Hey, Agatha, I witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and by so doing, souls have been won. Hey, we pray, Lord, more liberals, more liberals, more liberals for the harvest of souls in the name of Jesus. More liberals into the harvest, more liberals into the harvest. Abandon the coast, and Pakakaba, 
Lord, send them more liberals, more men full of passion, more men full of hunger, more men full of zest, more men. Lord, send them more men, more men, more liberals into the harvest. Hey! 
Ibano Kosa, Rebanda Kemanosa, Ekando Saka, Nations are open, Asia is open, America is open, Europe is open, Africa is open, South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, open up to the gospel. Men are raised in the cities and the nations in the name of Jesus. The door to the hearts of men. Abadagama, Eshandada, Ebrado Saban, Epata Kabada, Epatasa, Epatosa, Lagabosa, Epata Kabadon, Ekadosa. Lift your voice and pray that the whole of the gods of the world this war on the hearts of men is broken. We receive access to their heart. We receive access to their heart in the name of Jesus. Every nation that they represent about the culture. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Then in whom the God of this world have blinded their mind, leads the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. So shine unto them. We pray their hearts are open. The hold of darkness on their mind is open. In the name of Jesus, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull down stronghold, to pull down stronghold, to pull down every thought that have exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We declare that the hearts of men are open, stronghold and barricade on their mind and on their hearts are broken down the middle walls of partition that they have created by ignorance, that they have created by legalism. They are brought down. They are brought down. They are brought down in the name of Jesus. Anadagabata, Masayada, Embratosa, Embratosa, Ebadam. The nations are open. The nations are open. Open to the gospel. The nations are open. Eba, Abadagaban, Eshandaya, Rebadosa, Epatam, Rekendabo, Ebradasa, Ebrada, Ebada, Ebrada. Ebada, 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 is open, but there are many adversaries. We pray every hindrance to the spread of the word in our nation, in South Africa, in all the regions of this world. We pray those little partitions they are broken down upon this shutter in Gladas and the word of God can ascendancy in the hearts of men. Of the gospel, and Pata Kabadam, and Shambadam, 
This gospel is committed to faithful men in discipleship, to faithful men who in turn will raise more disciples, who in turn will raise more disciples. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Lord, more men, more men are raised who understand the gospel and who takes the gospel out in the name of Jesus. More men are raised who grow in the knowledge of Christ, who are committed to spiritual growth. More disciples are raised. Disciples, disciples to the to the nations on our campuses. Disciples that will influence our communities. Disciples that will take hold of a territory, take hold of a community, take hold of their classes, and bring the knowledge of Christ to bear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Of one, a patom, 
Son, and Shabbat, and Pradosa. Bless God for the gift of the Father who tries in the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. See, all of us are coming to the unity of the faith. All of us are coming to the knowledge of the Son. Jesus, lift your voice and bless God for the gift of the Father. Ebadosa, we see life changed. We see nations taken. We see men raised. Oh God, we bless you, Father, for the gift of a Father. Thank you for the gift of Dr. Ebia Damina. Ebadosa, Ramadata, Epapakosaban, Epapakabadam, Epadosaban, Epapakabadam, Epadosa, Rakabadaba, Epapakaba, Epapakosa, Ramadosa. Lift your voice and bless God. Bless God for the gift of a Father. An instructor. An instructor. Hey, Ebosaban, he has brought us doctrine. He has brought us reproof. He has brought us correction. He has brought us correction. We are built up. We are built up by the word of grace. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for the gift of the Father. Thank you for the blessing. Of the Father, we give you praise. Oh, no, Bosa, Emanadabata, Endoko Sandadabata, Indu Tabayado, Esandaraba, Epratosa, Epratosa, Epatokosa, Epratosa. He has shown us that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and that they are profitable for doctrine and that they are profitable for reproof, for correction in righteousness. We have been made perfect in the by the word of grace. Bless God for the gift of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. and begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. Go ahead, give him praise. Give him praise. Praise your father. In the name of Jesus. If you know it is done, can I hear that amen like thunder? Turn to your neighbor and say, we are chilling with the big boys. Tonight is the night. Amen. 
grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, you can be seated. Let's get some teaching before we pray some more. Hallelujah. Online, get ready, everybody, all over. Let's go. Kato Balaya. Thank you, Lord. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14. Romans, chapter 8, verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Next verse. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Next verse. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So we said that revelation is when the Spirit communicates to the soul. When the Spirit communicates to the soul. That is, the soul will only receive from the Spirit by revelation. In other words, there will be a disclosure or an unveiling of an information. One of the unique qualities of human beings is volition. Volition simply means a will. That is, one of the qualities of human beings is that a human being has a will. We have the volition to gather, to relate, to associate. It's called the Charter of Human Rights, which is covered by the United Nations Declaration. That is where you have human beings expressing themselves. That is, we are doing what we want to do or the ability to do what I want to do. He said that you have the will to choose what you want to choose, but you do not determine the outcome of the choice. So how free is free will? You choose what you want to choose, but you do not determine the outcome of what you choose. That means when you choose within the will of God, you have pleasantness, you have life, you have peace. The will of God is joy and peace. And if you choose contrary to the will of God, you have frustration, you have stagnation, you have sorrow, you have pain. Yeah, you're born again, you're born of God, but you're living a life of sorrow, a life of depression, a life of pain. Because you have chosen not to agree with God and align with God's will and purpose for your life. And so it's important for us to realize that the choices we'll make will determine victory or ultimately they will determine defeat in this world. God wants you to be able to guide the affairs of your life, you know, with victory. To guide the affairs of your life with wisdom. You know, um, uh, the book of Joshua 1.8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Now the book of First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. So now that shows you how man gets information. Man gets information by observation and imagination. Man gets information by observation and imagination. That is to say, every knowledge that man has is gotten by observation and imagination. The Bible says that concerning the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man. Observation and imagination. So the height of man's knowledge. That's why he said the prince of this world had they known it. Had the prince of this world known it? Well, the prince of this world have access to science. They have access to information. They have access to technology. Had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. That means with all of the access to ha they have to science, to information, and to technology, there are some things that they didn't know. So their entire body of information is gotten from the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mind gate. The eye gate, the ear gate, 
and the mind gate. Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it occurred to the heart of man, eye gate, ear gate, and the mind gate. And it's limited. When it comes to the things of the Spirit of God, the eye can see, the mind can perceive, and the ear can hear. The things that really matter, when it really gets there, the mind is limited. The eyes are limited. The ears are limited. That shows you that human will, as powerful as it looks, is not that powerful. Human will, as powerful as it looks, is not that powerful because it is limited by the, what the eyes can see. It is limited by what the ears can hear. And it is limited by what the mind can conceive. As powerful as human will, you know, looks, it's not really that powerful. So we have human will. And human will has to do with what I choose to do. Desires. We have said, how important is it for me to still place my desires on God's desires? Okay. How important is it for me to place my desires on God's desire. Because my desire is limited in knowledge. My desire is limited in knowledge. I can desire something, but I can never desire the outcome of what I desired. You determine what you desire, and you determine what you choose, but you do not determine the outcome of your choice. See that? So I can desire something, but I am not able to control the outcome of the desire. I may desire it, but may not like the outcome of my desire. I may not like the outcome of my desire. It's like a young man who desires sex. Alright, so he gets a lady to have sex with him. But he doesn't want a baby. And having had sex, the girl gets pregnant. He's not even ready to take care of himself. Talk more of take care of the lady. Talk more of take care of a baby. So now she's pregnant and he's ruffled. He's running all over the place. He's angry. He's frustrated. He's abusing and insulting her for putting him in trouble. But she didn't put him in trouble. He put her in trouble because he had a desire and looked for her to use her to express his desire. How be it in using her some fringe benefits accrued to his credit. He made profit. But now he doesn't want that profit. He likes the desire but don't like the outcome of the desire because he doesn't control the outcome of that desire. And he cannot wish the pregnancy away. Because pregnancy is beyond wish. Pregnancy is another human life. So now he's angry and the next thing he's thinking of is abortion. He wants to abort. So he gets the girl to be willing to abort. They abort and there's complication. Another outcome that cannot be controlled. Now the girl's life is on the line. And now compulsorily her parents come into the picture. What they were hiding has now become public knowledge. Now the doctor can't hide it anymore. So they take her to another specialist who may be able to intervene. But her life is on the line. So her parents are invited. One desire. Ripple effects that cannot be controlled. So how free is free will? I mean, I use pregnancy because that's the most visible one. That's the most visible that we can easily relate to it because, I mean, nobody here who is ignorant of such. If care is not taken eventually, the complication will lead to that lady's womb being removed. So now, they removed her womb, meaning she can't have children again for the rest of her life because of fulfilling one stupid desire. 
So the parents now want to charge the young man damages. But the entire family of the young man, if they sell them, they cannot even amount to buying a bicycle. So where are we going to get the damages from? So they force him to marry her. But she doesn't want to marry him. Complications. One stupid desire. Look at the outcome. Look at the impact. So God gives you the freedom to choose. But ultimately God determines what comes out of your choice. Please pay attention. It's very important. I'm not preaching here that if you sleep with a girl and get her pregnant, you will go to hell. We are not talking of hell here. We are not talking of heaven here. We have left that side since. We are talking about living in this earth as heaven and hell. By the choices you make. By the decisions you make. And by how you engage your desires. This world can be a living hell for somebody. Just by stupid choices. You can regret why you were born even though you are born again. By some stupid choices. But God wants you to live a life of victory. But you will only live that life of victory when you exercise your will within the confines of his will. That's where victory is guaranteed. Outside that there's no victory. Now, so human will is limited because human knowledge is limited. You cannot desire what you don't know. So desires are determined by knowledge. If I don't know something, I can't desire it. So which means your exposure and knowledge will determine your desires. Just like I said about the gospel, you can say I don't want Jesus, but you can never say I don't want hell. See, you can say I don't want Jesus, but you can never say I don't want to hear. So let's talk like human beings now. Are you a human being? How many of you agree you are a human being here? So because you've agreed that you're a human being already, you have agreed that you don't know everything. Once you agree you're a human being, what you've accepted is that you don't know everything. So let's talk like human beings. The eyes, the ears, and the mind can never know invisible things as a man. There's no natural man that can know invisible things with his eyes, ears, and mind. It is not given to natural people. Whatever you cannot see, whatever you cannot hear, whatever you cannot perceive in your mind, you can never know it as a man. Once you can perceive it, once you can see it, once you can hear it as a human being, that's the limit. That's the extent to which your knowledge goes. To what you can see, what you can hear, and what you can perceive in your mind. Now, we will break down into bits and pieces of what I'm just saying here so it will be clear. Number one, you cannot know God's plan and God's purpose by observation and imagination. I repeat, number one, you cannot know God's plan and God's purpose by observation and imagination. I mean, the scripture just told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, put it up, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Look at the next verse now, but God hath revealed. God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11, now watch this. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The things of God knoweth no man. So, it means that no ears, no eyes, and no mind can know the things of God. No ears, no eyes, no mind can know the things of God. You cannot know what God is thinking by observation and imagination. 
You can never know what God is thinking by observation and imagination. No matter how much you imagine, imagination will fail you in identifying God's plan and purpose for your life. Imagination will fail. No matter how deep your imagination is, no matter how sharp your observation is, you can never by those things know what God's mind is. So, you can be so intelligent, you can be so brilliant, you can have a depth of skills in observation, but they are never channels to know the mind of God. They are never channels. Your skills, your sharpness, your, your IQ, your intellectualism, all of it fails when it goes beyond the realm of human beings, which is seeing, hearing, and imagination. You cannot know God's mind by thinking. I'm thinking. No. No matter how much you think, you can never know God's mind by thinking. You can never know the mind of God by imagining things. Oh yes. You can create things and succeed in different spheres of life. Yeah, you can create things. You can invent things and succeed in different you know, spheres of life. By imagination, by thinking, and by listening. You can arrive at innovations. You can arrive at creativity. You can arrive at inventing things. But that's not how to know the will of God. That's not how to know the plan of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Which none of the princes of this world knew. The word princes are rulers. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known it by seeing, by hearing, by thinking, they will never have crucified Jesus. But they don't know. You can never know God's plan by imagination. You can never know God's plan by observation. In other words, you can see things and judge them, but God's judgment is different. You can see things and judge them, but God's judgment is different. You can think things through, and in thinking, you can analyze stuff. You can analyze positive, negative, and then, of course, when you think things through and you analyze, you arrive at scheming. You arrive at what? Scheming is not God. God never schemes. You arrive at scheming. Let's scheme. Now that we have seen by calculation and analysis, let us scheme. You arrive at scheming. You start to scheme your way through. I know people who scheme even in ministry. They are schemers in ministry. I have people say, Dr. Damina, what strategy do you have? You need a strategy. What strategy do you have in ministry? Well, here we have no strategy. <laughs> Our pastors are all here. Our workers are all here in church. We, do we have a strategy? We have no strategy. Do we ever have a meeting where we come to do strategic planning? We have no such meetings. Dr. Damina, what strategy are you using? I have no strategy. Someone said, well, <laughs> I'm starting a church in our own and someone says, well, have you done a survey? Go and do a survey. Go and do a mapping. Go and calculate. Find out what the people want. Do they like deliverance? Do they like healing? Do they like singles mingle? Do they like career development? Find out what they like. Give them what they like. And they will gather. Strategize. Let's scheme. A lot of pastors, that's how they start churches. They call it church marketing. Church marketing. Let's market our church. Let's get some two politicians who have influence in government and ordain them elders and give them seats so that when they come in, they will bring politicians to this church and they can create connection in government so that members of the church can get governmental contracts. Let's scheme. There are churches that do that.
Say, I hear you're a teacher of the word. All you know is to teach the word. Well, package deliverance inside your teaching. Because that's how they grow their church. Structure your future. Look at your future and put a structure to it. You understand? You can never know God's plan like that. Never. That's why many guys who go for church growth strategies come out with manipulations and witchcraft. They manipulate. They arrange miracles. They arrange word from knowledge. You didn't hear that. They arrange word from knowledge. They arrange word from wisdom. They ask all of you to come for counseling in the morning. They give you forms to fill. And those forms will ask you very vital information of your life. And the deliverance expert will tell you, make sure you feel everything. When you are finished feeling everything, they will counsel you and tell you, don't miss service on Wednesday. Wednesday, when you come, they are finished studying your form and studying all the information in your form. And then the man of God will say, there's somebody here, but I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear this. He will call something that you already supplied him in the form. And you go like, yes, yes, it's true, yes, it's true. The man is scheming all of you and manipulating all of you. And you think it is God. And you can never know because you're not part of the scheme. And then crowd will gather there. They being leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they all end in a ditch. Schemers. Some people are welcomed specially to church so that they will not go. You line up some folks outside the front of the church. You call it red carpet. Red carpet. And as you're coming, they're shouting, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. What, the, what is there to celebrate me for? I came to church. You're celebrating me for coming to church? What are you celebrating me for? That I came to church? Where should I go before? I should go to toilet or mosque? You, you don't need to celebrate me for coming to church. As a child of God, I do the word. The word tells me not to dismiss the assembly of myself together with the brethren. Coming to church for me is my nature. You don't tell me thank you for urinating. <laughs> when I go to urinate and I come out, you don't say thank you. What are you thanking me for? I urinated to help myself. I, I, coming to church for me is like urinating. It's part of my DNA. I don't need somebody outside to stand up telling me welcome. We bless you. We celebrate you. We celebrate. What for? What for? I don't need that. I'm coming to church doing myself a favor because my life depends on what I will hear from, from the house of God. I cannot live by bread alone. I need the word of God to live a victorious life. So I'm not coming to church to do the church a favor. I'm coming to church to do myself a favor and to function within the confines of God's word. Say, I hear you. I'm not doing anybody a favor for coming. Are you doing me a favor? You're doing yourself a favor. We don't need beautiful sisters lined up. We don't need handsome brothers. We are not in a fashion parade. This is the church of the living God. This is the pillar and ground of the truth. This is the assembly of the saints. This is where we gather to edify one another. They tell you, you know, you want to have a good church, put colored lights, you know. Make sure everywhere is black and dark so that people are not well seen, so people can feel free. Is it a nightclub? It's a church. We need light. We are the light of the world. We don't need darkness. Our deeds are not evil. We don't need darkness. We're not afraid of the light. Strategy, scheming, manipulation. You know, nowadays, uh, nowadays, you cannot preach too long in church, man. If not, people will not come. Make it brief. 
sharp sharp services 15 minutes message 15 minutes people are busy the shorter the service the more the crowd <laughs> the great commission say teach teaching them to observe in every service we are supposed to teach you to observe all To teach you to observe all takes time. That's why you see me take time. Because learning takes time. Discipleship takes time. Jesus will take unbelievers. Bible study three days and night. Unbelievers, not believers. If Jesus is teaching unbelievers for three days and three nights, how much more believers? So that's why on resurrection, the first seminar was 40 days. There's intensity required in learning doctrine. There's intensity. There's no casual approach to learning doctrine. There's intensity. Hours. Brother Paul taught from morning till evening into the night Eutychus fell down and died at midnight. Brother Paul brought him back to life, gave him a seat and taught till morning. Intensity. That's how we teach. That's how we teach. That's how we teach. Nothing like 15 minutes teaching. Are you a joker? Why don't you go and tell your university to teach you chemistry 15 minutes after three years you graduate? natural course like chemistry they will not teach you 15 minutes per lecture then is a bible that is the book of spiritual information we will use 15 minutes to teach you you are a joker if you are looking for 15 minutes churches they are there go and join them here here is old school old school we will we will take you through it until it enters I don't like to go to churches where they take too much time. You're not ready for life. You're not ready. We take time. We take time. We take time. You don't build in a hurry. You take time to build. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, the time will come, they shall not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Because sound doctrine takes time. That's why the word endure. You endure it. Because it takes time. It's not quick fix. It's not uh, tantalizers. It's old school cooking. With firewood and pot. And the pounded yam is not poundo. Is the one they boil the yam. Remove them one by one. Put inside mortar. You carry piston and pound. And when the pounded yam is ready, you can tell by the viscosity. By the viscosity of the pounded yam, you can tell the difference from poundo and pounded yam. True or false? Poundo has no viscosity. As you push your hand, as you enter, come out. It's like cut and cut. But pound, pounded yam that has been pounded, when you hold it, it will follow you. <laughs> it will follow you because it is obeyed in the Bible. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> Glory! So you cannot know God's plan by observation. Strategizing is not God. But listening attentively to know what God is saying will now help you to strategize within the plan of God properly. Listening to God. What God tells you now becomes your strategy. Listening to God is the most successful strategy. Listening to hear what God says. 
Your own planning will fail. But if you hear a word from God, a word from God comes with victory. Every word that God speaks comes with victory. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not come back to me void, but it shall accomplish whatsoever it is sent to accomplish. God's word never fails. So when you stay in prayer and in meditation to hear from God, whatever you hear from God guarantees victory. Number two, you cannot know Satan's tricks by observation and imagination. You cannot know Satan's tricks by observation and imagination. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 12 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high. Not against flesh and blood. So eyes cannot see, ears cannot hear, the mind cannot perceive demons and Satan and his tricks. So even Satan cannot be known by observation. His tricks cannot be known by observation and imagination. So we are much more limited in knowledge than we think. Yeah. We are much more limited in knowledge. Some of you have watched movies where someone was planted by Satan to destroy a ministry or to, to destroy, you know, a marriage. And then sometimes you say, ah, no, 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 no. Well, they may not have scripted the movie right, but ladies and gentlemen, Satan can plant someone in someone's life. Satan can plant someone in a marriage and Satan can plant someone in a ministry to scatter the ministry. Oh, yes. Satan can send a house girl to you as a house girl to destroy your home. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Satan can plant a staff in your company to destroy the company. Yep. Sure. Sure. And you will not know it by looking. You will not know it by thinking. And you will not know it by hearing. You can only know it by revelation. Now. That's not to say you start suspecting people. Suspicion is not revelation. They are not the same. We walk by faith, not by sight. Don't suspect people. Love people. No, owe no man anything but love. You owe everybody love. So love the brethren. Love people. Love people. Did you hear what I said? Love people. And then walk by revelation. See? Love everybody but walk by revelation. Revelation will help you know who to engage and who not to engage. So you live a victorious life. Oh yes. Oh yes. Don't be ignorant. Satan can use your desires. Satan can use your strong will. You know, people that have very strong will, no matter what they tell them, they know they, they, know they hear anybody. They don't hear anybody. They are easy to be victims in the hands of the devil. Satan can plant someone in your ministry. He can plant someone in your home. He can plant someone in your business. He can plant someone in your marriage. In your life. Satan can do it. And you won't know by observation. Neither will you know by imagination. You only know by revelation. And sometimes you will know by physical manifestation. By their fruits you know them. So you can't know Satan's tricks by observation. 
And then to add to that, Romans 8, 26. Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be ordered. Most of the times when we talk about God's plan, we talk about things, but things are not important as plans. Things are not important as plans. Because when we talk about the will of God, what people are thinking about is things, things, things. But you see, things are not as important as plans. Plans are what you want to do, where you want to go, who you want to marry, with whom you want to do business, where you want to do ministry. Those are not things. Those are plans. You cannot use Mark eleven twenty four for those. What things soever you desire. When you pray, things, things, things. What things? What things? Not what plans. What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. You can't use that for who you want to marry. Ministry. Career. Location. Where to live. Especially when you want to leave your, your city and relocate to another country. You don't use Mark 11.24 to pray because those, those, those things are more serious than things. Those are plans. They involve more things. So you cannot just rely on your desire for things in those plans. And sufficient enough to believe them as the will of God. You cannot. You know, Romans 8.26 talks about infirmities in plural. Even prayer, he says, we know not what to pray for as we ought. That's how limited we are in knowledge. Something is bothering you, but you don't know how to say it. We are like babies. You know, children, when they are sick and they don't know what to say, they cry. Why are they crying? Because they don't know what to say. You too sometimes, you get pained by life. And you lack articulation. You don't know how to say it. You know, you don't know what to say. You only cry. You only cry. So we know not to pray as we ought to. So that's where the help of the Holy Spirit comes in. Sometimes you are so cheated in life. You feel marginalized. The best you do is just cry. Because you don't even know how to explain it. You don't even know how to say it. Even if you say it, it's not coming out the way you're feeling it. True or false? That's how limited we are in knowledge. You're the one feeling it, but you're the one that is not able to explain it. Man is limited in knowledge. And that is why you can't rely on your will because your will is a victim of the knowledge available to you. Please pay attention. The spirit takes hold together with us against our infirmity. The greatest infirmity of humanity is knowledge. That's the greatest infirmity of humanity. Knowledge. You don't know as much as you should know. All we have said so far looks easy for anybody who is a believer. We have said you don't know God's mind and plans by observation. We have said you don't know the devil's tricks by plans and observation. Romans 8.26, even when we pray, we know not how to pray as we ought to. So man's greatest limitation is knowledge. That's why it's important to listen to God. Listen carefully. Man's greatest challenge is knowledge. Brother Kenneth Hagin needed money for ministry. Are you all listening? And then he began to pray. He began to pray and began to release angels to arrange circumstances. And then the moment he started praying, these businessmen in Texas, very rich guys, they said to Kenneth Hagin, they looked for him and came to him and said, we're going to fund your ministry. We will give you a car. We'll give you a house to set you up. That sounds like a breakthrough and an answer to prayer. But Kenneth Hagin took it to prayer. At night while praying, the Holy Ghost told him, don't accept their offer. If you do, they will run your life and ministry and you will not follow my plan. 
So the following day, Ken Hagin declined. He told them, thank you. It's a wonderful offer, but the Spirit of God is not leading me in that direction. Thank you very much. I would rather suffer for a while and try to just be patient and wait for what God has planned concerning my life and ministry. And that guy lived all his lifetime fulfilling the plan of God. Look at the impact of his ministry all over the world. Some of you, once you see money, you believe it's a breakthrough. So sign, it must be God. The Holy Ghost said to him, wait, I will bring you prosperity for your ministry at the right time. But that setting looks good. But you can get into that setting and after one year or six months, the kind of stress that will come with it, it will be a mess. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. The end is destruction. Things could look good. Not everything that looks good is good. Mm -mm. Not everything that looks good is good. If it is not God, it is not good. It is only good if it is God. The definition of good is God. So you're so limited in knowledge. You need to first of all admit that you are limited in knowledge. That's why we pray. Why do we pray? Because we don't know everything. So we pray to submit our ignorance to God's knowledge. Prayer is the acknowledging of our limitation. And prayer is the admission of our ignorance. And in prayer we subscribe to God's knowledge. Look at me, everybody. Let me ask you a simple question and let me humble you for a few seconds. Look at me. How many of you know tomorrow? I mean tomorrow. I'm not talking of tomorrow. Tomorrow. After this night. How many of you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Can I see your hands? That's how limited you are. Even tomorrow, just here, you don't know. Just here. Tomorrow, just here. Just here. Tomorrow. In a few hours, yet you don't know tomorrow. Okay, how many of you know this evening? You know this evening. That's humbling. That's more humbling. Just evening here, you don't know evening. Okay, let me humble you final. How many of you know one hour from now? One hour from now. That's how limited you are. That's why you cannot trust yourself. You trust God. Am I teaching good? You can't trust your plans. You can't trust your schemings. You can't even trust your strategy. That's how limited all of us are. That's how limited man is. You don't even know that brother you're sitting by here may be the next billionaire in a quiet bomb state. You don't even know. That's how limited we are. Some of you, what you're praying for, the person you're sitting with in this service now has the answer to your prayer, but because you don't know, you treat him casually. Because God doesn't throw answers from heaven, God uses men to answer prayers. I don't know if I'm teaching good here. That's why you don't take relationships for granted. You don't treat people familiarly. You treat people with honor because God can use people that you honor at any time and they will not resist God because within the corridors of honor, the blessing flows. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You honor the brethren. Yes, A sister looking for a brother to marry her, be nice to brethren because it is one of them that will introduce the guy who they know is looking for wife to talk to you. Boys talk to boys. Say, hey, man, I saw one big man. That girl, God created her on Sunday afternoon after he has rested. The guy said, where, 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 where? I said, ah, that big, oh, I'll tell you. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. Ah, I, I can't recover from, that big is too much. They are preaching your gospel. 
And then this guy is all set. Everything is good. He has everything he requires. Just He just doesn't know where to go and find ladies. And then they bring him to meet you. And two of you meet and greet. And then the, the guy who introduced both of you will just say, hey, man, this baby is extra, extra. X, L, X, 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 L, 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 L. When it comes to beauty. The guy suddenly will see you in that light. And then as he's thinking at home, they are busy preaching it to him. Man, did you see that girl? When she was talking, do you see the way she composes her words? And did you see she's very respectful? Her character is too much. They are preaching you to him. It's still guys that will preach it. And it's still guys that will tell, hmm, that stupid girl. Her character smells. That, did you see the way she abuses her mother? So you want to marry her? Ah, if you marry her, forget about us. Still, it is men that will discourage men from marrying men. Or marrying women. Because the world today is funny, sir. So. It's men that will discourage men from marrying women. <laughs> Teaching good. So be nice to everybody. Because you never can tell. Some of the people you see around you may not look important, but they know people that are important to you. Don't you never say, I need you in my life. Please speak well of me. When you have the opportunity, I promise to behave right. <laughs> Glory! Glory! You're limited in knowledge. One of the things you don't know is that you don't know beyond the time you are in now. You don't know anything beyond now. You don't even know what's going to happen in 10 minutes from now. Oh yes. You can make first class in nuclear engineering. You can make first class in space science. But you cannot have a first class in God's plan and purpose until you listen to God. One of the things you don't know, you don't know beyond the time you're in. You don't know tomorrow. I'm not talking about confession of faith. I speak by faith. I'm in charge of tomorrow. Tomorrow, no, no, so I'm, I'm talking about really knowing what the day holds. You can know that as a human being by observation and imagination. You cannot know things. You are limited in your knowledge of time. You must admit that. You don't know tomorrow. There are some of you here, the people you married are not people you planned for. The people you actually planned to marry, you didn't marry them. And when you didn't marry them, you just married somebody that showed up. And you're happy. That's how limited we are. How many of you are doing things today you never imagined you would do before? How many of you? There are many of you. You read engineering today, you are a trader. Is it not true? You read law, today you are a politician. You didn't do anything political science. Oh, your plan was to have a beautiful job, marry a, a small fine wife, produce small children, and just be a good father. Now you are a hustler. You are a hustler. You go to Indonesia, you bring container, and you wait for container in Lagos port, and you fight your way through Tinkan Island to make sure your container is cleared. You have a shed in New York, you have a shed in Aba, you have a shed in Onicha, and you have another shed in nowhere. You never planned for that before. I'm teaching good, I'm teaching good, I'm teaching good. Many of us are doing things today we never planned to do. Why? Because man is limited in knowledge. We don't know everything. We don't, we don't even know much. We only know small. Even the small self, we don't know it well. That's why we pray. That's why when you see some of us praying, we pray because that's all we know. We pray like there is nothing else because my brother, there is nothing else. So it's only prayer we know. When we pray, we pray with our life because that's all we know. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous 
power available, dynamic in his walking. Ask me and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He that accept receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, he that knocketh, the door shall be opened. Somebody shout, I hear you. That's why we don't play when we pray. Somebody say, ah, Christocentric churches don't pray, not power city. We pray more than even the prayer churches. Why? Because we understand that we don't know much. We are limited as human beings. So we pray to operate in the realm where there is no limitation. When we begin to pray, we move out of this realm. We enter that realm where all things are possible. We shift things around. We rearrange things. We make things happen. We call things to be. We create things in this world. Somebody shout, I hear you. When we pray, we pray like there's no tomorrow. When we pray, we pray like there's no knowledge. When we pray, we pray like there's no help. When we pray, we pray like we don't know anybody. My uncle could be the governor. My father may even be the president, but my brother. What to him that put his trust in man? My trust is in the Lord. So when I pray, I pray as if I have nobody. Jekote Nenga. Titi Lida Bobo Sheke. Le grodo zaka lada baba. Igamano gobo liga daka. De de le de bo zaka yata. Le groda zaka ta. Miantu nang le de bo zaka ya. Le groda zaka ka to le de baha. Le brota sata te ya to le ya hata. Membra nanto si anangolo ta shikiana. Le grodo zeke le brada da do le ana. Le grodo saka la na mandele de bobosh. Babra do do so kiana na nanto lo de bobosha. E gabora to le de baya. Angra da so ke la angeana, angeana, angeana. Ze zo 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 zo. Neanto ha ha. Le gazo berato mea engaloto ha. Jeko la batatela. La brato le balana. La brata le nabala. La brata le nabala. La brata le nabala. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Tell your neighbor you cannot live your life to chances. Your life is too precious. Don't subject your life to circumstances. Take your life in your hand. And by prayer, navigate the will of God. And live the best life. I didn't hear powerful, amen. Please sit down if you can. Shikaladabaha. So as a new creation in Christ, accept that you don't know everything. It's important. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't even think about tomorrow. Because tomorrow is out of your control. All you have is today. Make the best and the most of today. Live your life now. Stop postponing your life for a future promise. Stop postponing your life because of a promise one mortal man gave you who does not even have the control to even keep his own words to himself. Live your life today within the means that are available to you now and trust God to walk in his plan for your life. Stop postponing your enjoyment to a future. Enjoy now where you are with what you have.
Somebody say, I need to plan for my tomorrow. But you actually don't know tomorrow. So what are you planning? What are you planning? What are you planning? You don't know tomorrow. You don't even know where you will be. All you have is today. So utilize today that is available to you and trust God for tomorrow. Enjoy today. Enjoy it while you have it. Enjoy it. If what you have is ceiling fan, on it. Take your chair, sit under it. Cross your leg. If what you have is cold water, drink it and be grateful. Enjoy today by all means. It is this little, little daily enjoyment. When you put them together over a period of life, you can say you have a good life. Don't postpone today for a tomorrow that is not guaranteed. Be happy with people around you. Because if you are no more after a few hours, it is how you related with them that will be the memory you leave. Be happy with the people around. Be happy with them. Those little, little memories will eventually be all that you'll be remembered for if you're no more in this earth tomorrow. So if you're always angry, when you are gone, people remember you as a bitter soul. Be happy. Go around and make people happy. And if people are succeeding, celebrate them. Add your quota. When they think of you, let all they remember you for is the contribution you made to their joy, not the subtraction you made to their progress. I've told people, don't bring flowers to my graveyard because I don't need it. The flowers you're planning to bring to my graveyard, give me now. I want to eat everything while I'm alive. The day I die, if you like, just drop me in a hole. Forget it. It means nothing. Don't be building me a house when I die. When I was a tenant, when I was alive. You're a hippo, hippo, hippopote. <laughs> Shouldn't I close this service? I'm serious. It's called the worship of the dead. People do it a lot in our society. The worship of the dead is a religion. It's in the Bible. And the Bible says we, we do not worship the dead. Jesus said let the dead bury their dead. Because there's, there should be no big tradition about dead. No. The man is gone. The moment a man stops breathing, that man is no more around. How you bury him will not determine resurrection. Where you bury him will not determine resurrection. If he doesn't have Christ, he cannot have Christ by burial. And if you are trying to bury somebody in your family and the village are making it difficult, come to Uyo Cemetery, dig ground, put him inside. Case closed. Continue living the life. It's no big deal about burial. Missionaries came to Africa and died. They buried them in Africa. What's your problem? You're allowing a whole village, all the witches to hold you to ransom. Because you want to bury somebody in the village. Who say he must be buried in the village? On the day of resurrection, even people that died in the sea will rise. Don't let a village harass the sanity of your Christianity. No. There are cemeteries in town. That government has allocated for people to be buried. Bury the man there. Leave all those sentiments. He said, I must marry him in the village. When he was saying, you must bury him in the village. He didn't know that the villagers would gang up like that. Now he's not alive. You can change his decision. He's not here. Decide for him. Am I teaching somebody here? I'm 
I'm serious. I'm serious. Where they bury people is not what determines their value. What determines their value is what they wear before they died. Did you hear that? If you like, use Lamborghini to bury a man. Thieves will come in the night. They will dig out the Lambo and they will Lamborize the body. You are a joker. If the coffin is too expensive, if you don't put security, they will steal it and sell it. So what's your problem? Put the thing in the ground. On the resurrection day, mortality shall put on immortality. That is what matters. Ah, there's no protocol about burial. Mm -mm. I don't even need a book to read when I'm burying a dead person. There's no manual for reading. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> Let the dead bury their dead. Open the ground. Open the ground. Put him inside. Father, thank you. We comfort the family in Jesus' name. Push the sun. Glory. <laughs> Burial is over. That's finished. Stand up. Let's close. blessed father i pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building online on television on radio that this revelation grows big the word of god brings wisdom to us and i declare you make your way prosperous and you will have good success i didn't hear that amen you make your way prosperous you will have good success you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water your leaves shall not wither Whatever you do shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. Your steps are ordered. Your life is ordered. And in the name of Jesus, you have revelation knowledge. You function within the, the confines of God's direction. It is well with you. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. If all you know is to pray, then let me hear you start praying. A rosa garaba shetele brada ba shatara ba ha. Li rosa gata yarado zegele man di hando zagara ba ha. Le kato zagata yaraba. Bara kato zagara ba shihanda yata. Li rosa gata ndele brado zagari yaraba shihanda labosa. Mara kato zegrede ba shihanda yata raba ha. Le rosa kata yende le brada ba shihando zagaya ta. Baro zagaya. Le rosa gaya. Bara kata zagata yaraba shetele ba ha. if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Rosa Gayata, 
Araka Tarabata, Marosa Tayarata, Le Rosa Gatanda Yatano Rosa, Baraka Tayanosa Katalaba, Maracatosa de Rabaha, Aracatosa de Lemanda, Marico Rosa, Arosa Gaya, Arosa Gaya, Arosa Gaya, Hakaratanaba, Mareca Dosa Gayata, Mereca Dosa, Rosa Gosa, Aporosa Gayata, Mareca Dosa Gele Bashata. Maricadosa, 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 Hakondo, 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 we declare that our pastor's family is delivered from with reasonable and wicked men. We declare that our papa's family is delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Our papa, his family, they are delivered. They are delivered from the hands of wicked and unreasonable men. From the counsel of wicked men. From the counsel of unreasonable men. For this faith is not in all. His family is delivered. His family is delivered. In the service to the ministry, his family is delivered. His family is delivered. Mama is delivered. The girls are delivered. All around him are delivered. His household are kept. Marisa Zozoha, Marisa Zozoha, Marisa Zozoha, Marisa Zozoha, all who are numbered with our papa are delivered. All who are numbered with our papa are delivered. All who are numbered in this household are delivered. Mara Kadoshe Kelebra da Bahado Zagaya. They are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Mara Kayadada da Bosha. They Kado Zagaya Tandalabaha. Rizo Zagata Lebra. Heran de Mashihando Zagaya. Heran Kade Mashihando Zagrede Mashiha. Rakado Zagala Badaya. Maro Zagare Brodo Zagaya. He handles Arebra da Bashihanda Yata. Mare Kando Zagaya da Baha. Hero Zagele Manda Yata. He handles Agaya. Marosa Gayata, 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 Marosa Gayata,
We declare the Papa is without offense and blame. We declare the Papa is without offense and blame. He is without offense and blame. In the work of his ministry, in the work of ministry, he is without offense. He is without blame. In the delivery of his ministry, in the delivery of the gospel, he is without in his service to the body of Christ, he's without offense, he's without blame, 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 Offense is not found in him. Arena Gadosha, 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 Arena Gadosha,
Thanks be to God that our Papa views the, doc, views the doctrine of Christ as a wise, wise builder. Thank be to God that our Papa views the doctrine of Christ as a wise builder, as a wise builder. Wisdom, Sophia, to build her. Kadosha Katelebaha, Kadosha Talabaha. Thank God for that. Thank God for our Papa. Thank God for our Papa. That he views doctrine in us. As he views doctrine in us. The doctrine of Christ as a wise builder. Here, Father Kodosha. Precept upon precept. Father Kodesha Telebaha. Taking time to build doctrine in us. To build the doctrine of Christ in us. Thank God, Mary Kadosha Talabaha. Hey, Kadosha Telebaha. He's Talabashi Talabaha. He Kadosha Telebaha. We thank you, our Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, our Rosa Tayadabaha. Our Papa builds us. Our Papa builds us. He builds us in the doctrine of Christ. Wisely. 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 Barota Tayadabashi Hanalabaha. Carefully. Wisely. Carefully. Rightly dividing every word of truth. Rightly dividing every word of truth. Barota Dosha Tayadabaha. The Kadesha Tayadabaha. And those are Gaya Tarabashi and their top, Roka Dalabashi and their top, Baraka Dose, Eleva Sharaba, like the Elevisha Sharaba. You gathered us and you gave us a task of heart. Who views us wisely? Who views us in the doctrine of Christ? Wisely, wisely, wisdom, Kadosha Tarabah, rightly dividing every truth. We thank you, Baraka Dose, Eleva, Meta Dadabashi and their top, Arosa Gatelema Sharaba, Mika Dose, and their Tayaraba, Ha 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 
Zagaya, we had those Agaya Leva Hadayata, Barakado Zagaya Tarava, we had Ayadara, Barakadayara, Bakadayara, Hatoza Gatayara, Bakado Zagaya, we are those again, Rakoda Shatana, Hera Kadayata, Baroka de Ando Zagaya Tarava, Tadabosha Televa, the Kando Zagada Shahana, we go to the Geleva Shatarava, we Kadoja Geleva, we declare a radical invasion of the gospel in all social media platforms. We declare a radical invasion of the gospel in all social media platforms. In every platform, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Telegram, whatever social media platform, we declare a radical invasion, a radical invasion. We are going in there radically. All the platforms, we go there radically. We we invade them radically. We will invade them radically on every platform. Be it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Telegram, Barakadosha, WhatsApp, Barakadosha. Every social media every social media platform. We invade them. Invasion, Kadosha, Radical invasion of the gospel. Radical invasion of the gospel. Men testifying. Men testifying. Men testifying. Men witnessing. Men witnesses, men witnesses, men witnesses, we invade them, Marokodosh, Rika Dadabosh, Kadosa Gayat Hanabashi Hanayata, Rika Dadabosh, Kalabaha, Barakadosh, Tayaraba, Rika Dadabosh, Barakadosa Gayat, Kadarabasha Tayara, Rika Dosa Gayat, Barakadema Shataraba, Rika Dosele, 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 Kadoza gele mashihanda yata, bari kadoza gaya. Kadoza gele mashihanda yata, bara kadoza gele mashihanda yata. Kadoza gele mande yata, kadoza gele mashakara. Bara kada yata raba, bari kada raba shihanda yata. Kadoza gele mashihanda yata, bari kada yata raba sha. Gele kada yata raba, kadoza gara mashihanda yata. Kada kada raba shere mande yata, bara kadoza gele mashihanda yata. Bihonda zaga yata, bari kada zaga yata, bari kada. Akatataya, <laughs> Hakatataya, 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 Kadada da bosha, ere kuda sa, ere kada ya, kada da da ha, kado za gaya ha, ri kado za gara ba ha, ere kada da da bosha, ere kado za gaya ha, ri kado za grada ba sha, akoda sha tara ba ha, ere za gara da ba ha, ri kado za gaya tara ba ha, ri kado za grade ba shi handa ya ta, kado za grade ba sha tara ba, kado za grade ba sha, ere de ba shi handa ya ta, kado za grade ba, adera kado za ha, ri kado za grade ba, bare kado za ge ha. Hara kada da ba sha, hera kada ya ba, hera kada ya ba, hera kada ya ba, hakota sa kada da ba, heka toza kada 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 ba, hakata kada ba sha kada ba, heroza kada ya, hakata kada ba sha kada ya, hakota sa kada ba, hakata kada ya, heka da ba, bara kodo za ha, heka kodo za ya, kandero za kada ba sha kanda ba sha, bara kando za kende ba sha, kara kando za kende. Barikado, <laughs> Aroha, 
Go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him praise. Le koto be gelida babambre gede galo do bodo golo no mose kelina managa ege bo jakaya na ha. Glory! Lay hands on your head and begin to speak to your health. Le go do go bo do go. Declare your body a vehicle for the advancement of God's purpose. Declare your body an, an instrument of the advancement of God's agenda on the earth. Begin to speak to every organ of your body. I've been bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Like Korotosuka Larababa, all the organs in my body, they cooperate with the healing power of God. I declare that my body is stronger. I am strengthened with might uh, by the spirit in the inner man. Uh, Christ dwells in my heart by faith. Uh, from my head to my feet uh, I declare that the power of God is at work. Uh, the exceeding greatness of his power. The power that raised Christ from the dead uh, dwelleth in my body. All my organs are responding to the power. I am stronger in my heart. Uh, I am stronger in my mind. Uh, my cells are refreshed. Uh, my blood is purified. Uh, my body is strengthened. And, uh, my bones, my joints, uh, my marrow, my ligaments, uh, my tissues, my bloodstreams, uh, they are sanctified and purified. Uh, my nervous system, my respiratory system, my digestive system, all the systems in my body, they are purified. Uh, they are far from oppression. My heart. My liver, my kidneys, my lungs, le korotabo sakia, la brasha kalerababa, my eyes, my ears, my my skin, my toes, my legs, la karata baloteba, quickened by the Holy Ghost, angelerabo shakaya, agaba sotele, agaba sotele, agaba sotele, agaba sotele, agaba sotele, agaba sotele. I am refreshed by the will of God. My youth is renewed like an eagle, like a Tomenga, anga masotele de baya, aga ba joko. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, say with me, I stand complete. I'm perfect in all of the will of God. I am strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. I walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I am fruitful. Unto every good work. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in my season. I do not dry up. I do not dry up. No dry seasons. I am fresh all year round. I run. I am not weary. I walk. I faint not. I run through a troop. I leap over a wall. My youth is renewed like an eagle. I am strengthened. I am strengthened. I am energized 
in my body. My body cooperates with the purpose of God. My body cooperates with the will of God. Every organ of my body is energized, strengthened, refreshed, 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 refreshed. I deal wisely in the affairs of this life. I deal wisely in the affairs of this life. I have direction. I have solution. I know what to do. I know where to do it. I know how to do it. I am strengthened. I am clothed. I am clothed with might by the Spirit of God. I walk worthy of the Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I am without offense till the day of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare things are working in my favor. Circumstances, situations are arranged to work in my favor. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am kept. I am kept. I am preserved. I am delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. I am far from oppression. I am delivered from the snare of the fowler. My entire body is energized. Glory! Say, I'm far from oppression. Say, you'll be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. You'll be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. You'll be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. Say, I shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. Can I have a powerful amen? Well, go ahead. Give God a praise for answered prayers. Glory! 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 Woo! Amen! Yeah, this is how to chill with the big boys. You stay awake and alive. Amen. Tomorrow evening, we're in house centers. At 6 o'clock, we'll be there till 8 o'clock. We'll take the word and then we'll pray and fellowship with one another within our little, little circles. Everybody, make sure you're there. Online community, we continue. You know, you want to pray, you can continue. You can go back to all the messages again and pray through the prayers. But 5 a.m., we're live again in the morning to pray one hour before you break the fast. And then we're back in the evening. Now, listen, everybody, look at me. What we are doing here will produce in you what we call resilience. You become a resilient person. A person that never gives up. Because when it comes to spiritual exercises, you give yourself to it, even when you didn't feel like it. And in the process, something is being developed inside you. Character, discipline, stamina, all of that perseverance is being developed inside you. Something is going on. Apart from all the spiritual benefits, there is resilience. You don't feel like it, you stand up and you push through. You don't feel like it, you stand up and you push through. It's working. Can I have a good amen? So when you remember that, push, 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 push. We are not of day that draw back. We are of day that press forward. Glory to God. Get a good offering. Let's give tonight before we go. Glory to God. Those online, there are banking details on the screen. Uh, online television, there are banking details. We give when we fast because that is a time of generosity. Somebody was telling me today that huh, this night fasting is more serious than the day one. <laughs> I thought the night fasting would be easier. <laughs> eh? This is the real fasting now. That one that you go to work in the morning. You're busy, busy, busy. You come by 4.35. The day has finished. While you're doing it, you're mixing gari. You put the soup on the fire. You never even break the fast. You don't need taste that. <laughs> 
God don't catch you. <laughs> Glory to God. But honestly, I thought this was going to be easier. <laughs> Very true. But this gives us more time. More time to pray, more time to think, more time to plan, more time to listen to God, isn't it? Father, we give in faith tonight. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we thank you for the privilege to honor you, to walk in the light, to walk in generosity, to walk in obedience. Oh, Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity we have to fellowship like this every day. And we thank you that the light is shining on our paths. And we rejoice that as we keep giving and supporting and advancing your cause, we are enriched in all things to continue to advance your purpose on the earth. And we give you praise. Our offering is a sweet smell before you today. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Well, guys, we love you. Good night and be blessed. You can drop your offerings. We'll see you. We'll see you on Sunday morning, 7 30. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.